Pixar is one of the most creative and inspirational entertainers of children ever. However, they have the dirtiest and twisted minds in the business. Forget the single frame of pornography that could be found spliced into Lady and the Tramp. The supposedly hidden fallacies in most, if not all, early Disney cartoons and that sinister attempt of Sesame Street to normalise the homosexual agenda in impressionable heads. Pixar has a much more subtle and intellectual way of corrupting your mind. Welcome to Sight Unsound. <laughs> Pixar Studios is not only shattering box office records, but also smashing the glass ceiling for a more conservative ideology. One that has been prevalent in animation since Disney first put his heavy pencil around the outlines of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Today, you're going to discover all about how Toy Story isn't the charming tale of friendship and families that you first thought it was. It's actually an ode to the modern man, and how the muscle-bound hunter-gatherer of old has officially been cast aside in modern society. And not being at the top of the food chain doesn't mean that you've been emasculated. It's been written about at length that Toy Story has some overtly sexual undertones. Woody, who is floppy and limp, loses his bay, Bo Peep, to the new toy on the block, Buzz, who is hard and rigid and pops up on command. However, the film shows that there is more to life for man than worrying about the functionality of his sexual organ. The leading man in films for the past 100 years has embodied the alpha male. By showing us heroes concerned with power, money, women, violence, material success, we understand that in order to be masculine, these are the things that we need to be concerned about as men in order to succeed at our gender. When an alpha male hero finds himself at the innermost cave of his narrative, the place where he must fight the villain of the story, he is usually at the point of death. He either suffers a mental or physical injury, but must strive on alone, eventually conquering that ailment in order to defeat evil. In unfortunate modern parlance, he must man up to succeed. Susan Jeffords, however, points out that since Beauty and the Beast, animated films began to resist and sometimes ridicule the machismo once de rigueur of leading men. This resistance to the portrayal of the alpha male figure has been mirrored by the rise of the better male. The testosterone pump muscle-bound Hollywood is rapidly deflating, taking its place as a new kind of leading man, the kind who is just as happy following as leading or never getting off the sofa. At the beginning of Toy Story, we clearly see that the alpha male model is being set up with the characters of Sheriff Woody and Buzz Lightyear. They both become a metaphor for the modern man in conflict. They base their worth on the masculine model of competition and power, desiring not only to be the favourite toy of their owner Andy, but also to possess the adoration and authority over the toys in the playroom. Woody shows himself to be a natural leader. He occupies a position of both paternalistic care and patriarchal dominance. In the beginning of the film, he conducts a staff meeting about the family's impending move that highlights his dominant position in the toy community. Woody is to represent the old-school thought of masculinity. He is a cowboy and thus most obviously coded as the debunked model of what it means to be a man. Woody's greatest fear appears to be that he is going to be replaced by Buzz, who represents a new style of masculinity, where spectacle and display are more important than practicality. Finally, Woody's moment of darkness, both literal and metaphorical, comes when he is trapped under an overturned milk crate. He must accept help from Buzz and is finally forced to admit that he doesn't stand a chance against him in competition for Andy's affections, which is everything that's important to him. In this, he has to acknowledge his own feminine values, from his need for communal support to his deep, abiding and then later maternal love of a boy. This feminine stamp is characteristic of the new man model towards which these characters' narrative journeys take them. However, the film does not advocate that the alpha masculinity that Buzz shows is any more correct than Woody's. Buzz comes to know who he really is, a toy, by learning that he cannot actually fly. Sid, the demon neighbour from next door, serves as a means to that end, not only forcing recognition of Buzz's personal limitations, but also representing the annihilation of self, the complete destruction of the old ideology that Buzz represents so that he might build himself back up as a better, more rounded, person, toy. Buzz sees himself on the television in Sid's house, finally realising that Woody is right and that he is a toy. Initially refusing to accept this new truth, he defiantly attempts to fly anyway, landing sprawled out on the floor with a broken arm. This is when Sid's little sister finds him and sits him down at her tea party as Mrs Nesbitt, 
complete with a pink hat and apron. Buzz becomes entirely feminised and accepts what he now sees as his new role. There is no support network available for him as the alpha male who has insisted on working alone and hiding his feelings. As an ex-alpha male, he cannot understand a life without striving for overtly masculine things and instead occupies the role that in his mind he feels that a woman should take on. When Woody tries to rescue him, Buzz wails, Don't you get it? I am Mrs Nesbitt. But does the hat look good? Oh, tell me the hat looks good! He suffers a crisis of masculinity as he is no longer who he thought he was. Like many alpha males, he stressed over his task. His was to save the galaxy and his strength came from his belief in his ability to do so. The alpha male model has failed him and he is now crushed. He is simply consumed as an object which in his mind is to be greatly feminised. The two characters realise that they need one another in order to understand and accept their feminine qualities and use them to survive. It is the male-male relationships that the two form which allows their continued journey towards the new masculine model. Together they discover the necessary truths about their masculine strength only when they discover how much they need one another. With new strength realised by their new homosocial friendship and intimacies, the male characters are able to triumph over their respective narrative arcs, demonstrating the desirable modifications that Pixar makes to the alpha male model. With this new knowledge, the inner battles of our heroes are completed and they are able to escape their respective physical and metaphorical innermost caves by working together. To escape from Sid, Buzz and Woody must cooperate not only with each other, but also the deformed toys that lurk in the dark corners of Sid's bedroom. They learn how to humble themselves and ask for help from the community. Still, after the exit of Sid, the adventure does not finish for Buzz and Woody. Unable to catch the moving van as Sid's dog chases them, Woody achieves the pinnacle of the new man narrative. His new masculine identity is the thing that allows him to express his feelings and acknowledge his community as the site of his power giving him further strength in the acknowledgement of it. Woody is able to sacrifice the competition for his object of desire and lets go of the van strap. He's expressing his caretaking, nurturing love and surrenders to the good of the beloved. Take care of Andy for me, he pleads, as the audience believes that he has sacrificed himself. However, Buzz's own moment of truth shortly follows, where he allows himself to seize his power as a toy rather than as the space ranger he's been playing at. Holding Woody, he glides into the family's car and back into Andy's care, correcting Woody by proudly repeating his earlier critical words back to him. This isn't flying, this is falling with style. Buzz has found the value of being a toy and the fulfilment that comes from just being owned and loved. Just as we come to accept the possibility that toys can tell us more about ourselves than we first thought. So what do you guys think? Does Toy Story have interesting things to say about modern masculinity? Are there any other films that showcase positive, progressive role models for us? Or is it that the alpha male is alive and well in film and TV and is never going to die? Leave us your musings below and if you want to keep your mind in the gutter, you can like this video. And also, if you want more of your favourite childhood films corrupted, you can hit that subscribe button for more sight and sound. Oh, it's sweaty in here. Cheers.